But with that context, uh, this next line in the document, nearly every US government department and agency has potential equities in the utilization and development of space. That's everybody. And we're gonna see some examples later in this document, but when it, when it says, nearly every governmental department has a role, they really mean it. And, and there are pieces here that you, know, you, wouldn't, that you wouldn't typically expect in a space document. So we're gonna to get to that in just a second. Um, this document has kind of definitions for roles of government, current programs that exist, and potential new programs. So have that in the back of your head when we look at the next couple slides here. Um, we, I think most of the people watching these videos already know that uh, the NIH, National Science Foundation, and NIST already have programs. Uh, I believe that's, I won't say that's common knowledge. Uh, my mom wouldn't know that, for example. But, um, but I think the people watching this video probably have a pretty good handle on the kinds of programs and experiments run on the International Space Station. Uh, but that's a pretty sm small list, and you know, frankly, this is a list for nerds, right? Like, like me, right? The, that um, this is the kind of stuff you would expect to happen on the International Space Station. And then here's our curveball. Uh, most people don't think of the Department of Energy when they think of going to space. I think that's. <laughs> Uh, I think that's a missed opportunity that's been missed for decades, but uh, now it's time. We are going to develop nuclear power systems, fission reactors, and nuclear propulsion systems. That is so incredible. That's straight out of science fiction. So the DOE suddenly has a huge role, uh, a, a role I would argue could change the na nature and balance uh, of what happens in space going forward. Uh, that, that, this, that this piece is in this document, uh, I, I find that kind of astounding, long overdue, and almost giddy for what the future could hold if if Department of Energy really sinks their teeth into this. Um, I said at the beginning of this video that this document is about a month old. The very day after this document was issued, the Department of Energy created a new request for proposal for nuclear power systems in space. So the ripple effects of this policy happened immediately after this policy was uh, available to the public, so it, it really is. It really is staggering, and that's just that's just one example. Um, I'm going to go into some nuance here. Whenever you say that, um, when when you have a document like this, and the document says will provide, that is a declaration. That is a declaration from. The President and the White House through the National Space Council to all of the branches of government under the executive branch. This is a declaration. It is not optional. The Department of Defense will provide efficient and responsive commercial space launch and re-entry regulations. That's not a choice anymore. There has been conversation about, about who in DC is gonna manage uh, launch and re-entry. Um, it's not a question anymore. It has been decided and this is how it's going to happen. Uh, same thing with this. The Department of Commerce will lead, uh, it will be the lead government advocate for growing space commerce, both on Earth and in space. So as NASA was being um, the controller, I would say, of things like um, COTS and CCDEV, those are, uh, those are uh, commercial orbit um, programs, commercial uh, uh, crew, commercial uh, resupply. 
NASA had been controlling all of those monies and all of those contracts and frankly a lot of people risked their careers on those kinds of contracts. Well now this is saying, look, NASA, good job, keep up the exploration work, Department of Commerce is going to take it from here and we are going to be the ones who help grow the commercial space sector down here on the ground and out there in space. Uh, this is super muddy. People don't know what this means. I've been in this field for a long time. I've been thinking about this line for many days now. I have no idea how this is going to play out. This could be great. It could be really game changing or it could be Pandora's box. Honestly, I, I don't know how this is going to play out. Um, I, I'm going to remain optimistic until we know more. Again, here's that will language, right? The Department of Interior will, let it's, it's got a caveat, it's got a, a wiggle word in here, will help, right? This isn't the same as will earlier, right? So will help leverage its terrestrial experience in mining and other relevant areas. Okay, so the Department of Interior is going to be doing stuff on the moon and Mars. I bet most of the geologists at the Department of Interior did not see that coming. I don't know any geologists at the Department of Interior, but I think this is going to be a surprise to some people. Uh, I, I'm very excited about that. Uh, talk about a group of folks that are super capable at what they're doing. Um, now we're just gonna hand them a new data set, two planets, maybe some asteroids, and say, hey, what do you think about this? Um, I'm, I'm excited about that. I know that, um, oh, I don't know, two years ago, a year ago, space.com did an article on a researcher at the Department of Interior who actually did look at, at lunar data, but as far as I know, that's a one-off situation. So uh, I'm excited that, that this whole new branch of the government is going to be tasked with being um, the keeper of this particular data, the, the uh, assessor, if you will, of this kind of data. Um, I wonder what their role is going to be. Um, do they have assay capabilities for whatever rocks we bring back? Do they just map and identify? Um, are they going to be a, uh, uh, do they have a role of staking a claim on the moon, right? The Department of Interior does have some jurisdiction over claims of property uh, on federal land, or at least leasing of property on U.S. federal land. Where, where is their role? What are the lines for the Department of Interior? Uh, I think that's going to be a huge question. I'm going to bet there's a lot of people at the Interior that did not see this coming. Uh, if, if, they, if they did see it coming, uh, I think I might have heard something about it, and I didn't. So um, I, think it, I think it may have surprised some people along the way. But they're really good at understanding materials and resources, so I think it'd be great to include them into this, uh, into this program of, of, of Moon and eventually Mars. Uh, I said a little while ago we're going to go deeper into international partnerships. Um, Again, the language, will lead, reflect US values and policies, can help, now that's a, that's a wiggle word, right? That's, that's, they've got some, some room to maneuver there, but never forget that they're advancing US space goals, okay? So this is the Department of State. Typically, they are not very involved in space stuff. Now, they have been very involved with the International Space Station. Uh, the ISS is actually a bunch of interlocking uh, treaties. Um, I was privileged to go to the Heads of Agency program in Washington, D.C., I think um, about six years ago. Uh, the Department of State orchestrated that whole thing. It wasn't a NASA program that invited other people, it was the Department of State that brought in 
the heads of agencies from about 40 different space programs around the world. So the State Department has a role that has so far been mostly overlooked except for policy nerds like me. Um, but now they are going to have a larger role. So this language is very specific and directive, but then what are they going to do? Um, yes, always they're, they're working on diplomacy. They're always working on stability. Uh, um, I don't see them working on transparency particularly often, so I'm excited to see what that looks like. Um, confidence building measures, uh, th that's the kind of stuff you would expect from the State Department, right? But here's one that I think is still very fuzzy. Guidelines for responsible behavior. There are some conventions out there. Uh, there are, there, there's, there's several international rules about operations in space. Uh, but responsible behavior? That means something different to each actor. I talked a moment ago about academic, civil, commercial, and defense. But I'm primarily talking about American academic, civil, commercial, and defense. Responsible behavior for another nation or another culture is defined differently. So I'm really curious how, how the State Department's going to thread this particular needle. Um, and we've seen recently lots of bilateral instruments, very few multilateral instruments. Uh, so the argument in Washington, D.C. is it's easier to negotiate one-on-one -on -one with many one-on-one -on -one relationships instead of group bargaining uh, relationships. So I, I'm curious to see how they're going to handle the mandate here. Again, you know, this will language doesn't give them wiggle room. Um, and then this last piece about can help convey in advance U.S. space goals, objectives, plans, with foreign countries. That's their job, right? So that part's not going to be a very big surprise, uh, but the guidelines, I think, is going to be a surprise, or at least uh, we're unsure how that's going to play out.